There may be as many as 300,000 child soldiers in more than 50 conflicts around the world. Ishmael Bea used to be one. At 12, he fled attacking rebels and wandered the area of his home village, lost, his home made unrecognizable by violence. By 13, he'd been picked up by the government army, was handed a gun, and found he was capable of truly horrible acts. At 15, he was released by the army and sent to a UNICEF rehabilitation center, where he struggled to regain his humanity, first by breaking free of the drugs given to all soldiers, and then by the violence he'd learned in the life as a soldier. A Long Way Gone, Memoirs of a Boy Soldier by Ishmael Bea. Eleven-year-old Roger is trying to make sense of his classmate Robert Yummy Sanford's death. But first, he has to make sense of Yummy's life. Yummy could be as tough as a pit bull sometimes. Other times, he was sweet as a sugary treat he loved to eat. Was Yummy some sort of monster or just another kid? As Roger searches for the truth, he finds more and more questions. How did Yummy end up in so much trouble? Did he really kill somebody? And why do all the answers seem to lead back to a gang? the same gang to which Roger's older brother belongs to. Yummy, The Last Days of Southside Shorty by Gene Airy is a compelling, true graphic novel about events that took place in Chicago in 1994. This explores gang life. You, can, you need to question your understandings of right and wrong and good and bad. Alex Sawyer is no angel. He's made some very bad choices, but breaking into that last house, everything had gone smoothly until the house filled with ghostly, silver-eyed men who knew his name, who calmly shot his best friend and said, run, Alex. Cut hours later, Alex is sentenced to life in Furnace Prison. Located a mile beneath the Earth's surface, there is only one entrance and nobody, nobody gets out. But Furnace is much worse than most prisons. Bizarre guard dogs tear inmates apart. Inhuman creatures roam the prison corridors. Weezers arbitrarily drag inmates off, never to return, or worse yet, to return as automated death walkers. They say under heaven is hell, and under hell is Furnace. This is Lockdown, Escape from Furnace, by Alexander Gordon Smith. Marcus and Eddie are the stars of Long Island City's high school basketball team. Marcus is black and Eddie is white, but they got past all that racial crap and have been best friends for years. Both boys are looking forward to great futures in college basketball and are waiting to see where they land their scholarships. Then one cold night, something goes wrong and they make a big mistake. Now they can't turn back and one of them will have to pay. Black and White by Paul Volpani. Every November, the horses return and people die. In the tradition of the island of Thisbe, this is not a regular horse race. These horses are captured from the sea. Horses that want to return to the sea, horses that can barely be tamed, horses that eat dogs, cats, horses, and their riders, if they can catch them. Sean Kendrick, who's 19, has won four of the past six races. But his life and the horses that he works with are not his own. Winning this year means winning back his life. Kate Puck Connolly is desperate. Raised on this beat, she's never even seen the races. But she knows about the prize money. And when poverty and desperation threaten to split her small family, she takes a desperate gamble and enters her mare dove into the Scorpio races. Scorpio Races by Maggie Stiebotter. Fifteen-year-old Cece and Mac didn't expect to fall in love. She's a sensitive A student. He's a high school dropout. 
but soon they're spending every moment together, bonding over a rescued dog, telling their secrets, making plans for the future. Everything is perfect until, until Mac makes a horrible mistake and in just a few minutes, the future they've been planning becomes impossible. In this stark new reality, both of them must find meaning and hope in the memories of what they had to survive when the person they love can't stay. Stay with me, my Paul. Rescue mission number 102, booby trap the pool. I'm in the pit again, but it's not raining frogs. It's not raining anything at all. It's nighttime and there's no moon. The pit is dry and the air is hot and dry. I have my stakes and my Bowie knife. I have a pair of latex gloves. I have a plastic Tupperware container with the easy pop lid in place. Inside the container is something brown. I set each stake into the dirt and hammer the points to get them in solid. I then resharpen the points with the knife one by one until all 20 of my stakes are there pointing up. A bed of nails for a giant. Everybody Sees the Ants, a novel by A.S. King. Who is Subject 7? Years ago, scientists began developing the ultimate military weapon, deadly sleeper assassins housed within the bodies of kids. Now, Subject 7, the dangerous alter ego living inside a 16-year-old boy, has escaped the lab and is on a mission. His objective? To seek out the handful of others that are like him and destroy their creators. Five teenagers leaving, leading typical lives until the day they get a call from Subject 7, and a vicious, bloody battle for their lives is just beginning. This is Subject 7 by James A. Moore. Alexander Zan is a misfit, an awkward loner, too sensitive to make it in the real world and too different to find a place for himself. His big brother Robert has got his life together, he works at a garage, has a girlfriend and goes to community college. And even though he may be the first in line to tear into Zan, he always has his back. But when Zan's odd behavior becomes to move to a dangerous extreme, Robert may be the only one who can save him. The question is, can Robert save himself? Angry Young Man by Chris Lynch. Ay, papicito, donde estabas tu vida? Let's do this. Perfect chemistry. It's a book. My name is Alex. Me llamo Alejandro. I grew up in the streets in the South Side Barrio. I live with my mother where I live with my brothers. My father's not here. He died like all the others. Hi, I'm Brittany. Just like the singer, my life is perfect. No need to stop and linger. My daddy's rich. My mom's a hottie. I always play cool, even when I'm on the potty. We met at school in a parking space. She nearly drove her beamer right over my face I said, watch where you going, what you can't drive Stick, mama, I think I could teach you I think I feel sick In English, please. Have you ever had a churro? Is that a disease? Uh, he is kind of cute. Ella muy bonita. In English, whatever. You can say I'm a masita. I don't know what that means, but I do know the score. If I fell for him, it'd be the Third World War. Perfect Library's hot on the shelf. She 
Let's open up the book, enrich yourself, read!